The Goldenberg House was a true discovery in the design process of the architect Liu Kahn at a crucial moment in his career. However, like so many architectural designs, for whatever reason, it was never built. In this video, we take a close look at the design for the Goldenberg House. We'll discover just what makes it so special, we'll do some reconnaissance to construct the unbuilt building into the computer, and explore what it would have been like to visit it if it had been built. So let's go. I'd venture to say that most architectural designs don't even get built. But at the same time, some of the experimental and the lasting foundational lessons of an architect's career are found in unbuilt schemes. But the fact that they remain unbuilt means that no one will be able to visit these designs to experience them and witness what it would have been like to walk around in their spaces. Such is the case of the Goldenberg House by Liu Kahn. While researching for the video that I made on how Kahn uses rooms in his designs, linked above, drawings and images of models for the Goldenberg House kept popping up, and I had never really looked that closely at that house before. And this is despite the fact that it is a widely regarded as a critical moment within the design thinking of Khan. It's an early use of a centralized arrangement that also includes the servant and the served alternating rings and corners that would be taken away to produce what would become the Philadelphia corner. So I want to take a deep dive into the Goldenberg house. We'll redraw its plans and its sections, we'll build a full 3D model of it in the computer, and then explore it as if we were visiting it for the first time. I'll also share the model as a file that you can use to explore uh, by yourself on a phone or a tablet or a computer without any extra software, and that's linked in the description below. Also, the video is broken into different chapters that you can skip around on if, to find the most interesting aspects of the exploration for you. So let's visit the Goldenberg House, starting with the timeline. The Goldenberg House was designed in 1959 by the architect Louis Kahn. Louis Kahn was born in Estonia in 1905 and moved to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania shortly after, where he would live for the most of his life. He attended architecture school at the University of Pennsylvania, where he would end up teaching there in 1957, following a stint at Yale where he would complete his first major commission of the University Art Gallery. In addition to Kahn's legacy of building, his impact as a teacher was an important chapter to his architectural contributions. At UPenn, he would stunder under Paul Kret in a style of instruction called Beaux Arts where students would recreate and render notable works of the past. Absorbing their ancient lessons through imitation to understand classical principles of symmetry and proportion which underlie building plans and facades. This form of study would influence his approach even with his more modern designs. While talented, Kahn would remain relatively obscure through the 1930s, 40s, and into the 1950s, but would then explode into a decade of the most prolific architectural production ever seen by an architect. Through this time, he'd be regarded as one of the best architects living, and that is until his untimely death by heart attack on a return trip from India where his body would spend three days in a train station bathroom until he was discovered. But in 1959, when the Goldenberg House was designed, he was on the cusp of his creative boom. It comes just after the Trenton Bathhouse, a similarly arranged centralized plan with four sides and empty corners. It also falls right at the beginning of the design for the Richards Medical Research Laboratories where Kahn's servant and serve techniques would develop, and the Golden House was designed at the same time as the Eschrick House, which uses similar T-shaped windows. And also at the same time was the Sulk Institute Commission, which would go on to be considered one of his defining masterpieces, but whose plan would begin in a configuration reminiscent of the Goldenberg's atrium with rings of activity before it would go on to be straightened out in the famous axial view outward into the horizon that would define that work. The Goldenberg House was designed for a suburban lot in Rydell, Pennsylvania for the clients Morton and Mitzi Goldenberg. It was slated for this site here, where another house would end up being built four years later. The lot size was 140 feet by 180 feet and diagonally oriented relative to north. The driving concept of the building is the square atrium, lined with glass, located at the center of the building. A few of the sketches that Kahn made help to explain the role of this space. The square has radiating diagonal lines coming from its corners. However, the movement occurs as a series of square rings around the courtyard, turning perpendicular at these angled creases. Early sketches show a more regular outer shape, which isn't true for the final form. You can also see the literal erasure of the corners in Kahn's drawings. The corners were drawn at first and then removed, and then this process creates what we've called a Philadelphia corner, because it shows up in other prominent architect's work around the same time in Philadelphia, notably Robert Venturi's, which is a similar corner in his beach house, but is also seen in the work of Mitchell Giorgola and Thomas Vreeland. The effect is that the building plan looks like a solid square, but it also looks like it's made up of four different sides or objects coming together, and it is left ambiguous what is intended by the architect. The 
flow of the house is around the heart of the building, which is public, and you move toward the rear exterior. Another ring of utilitarian spaces exists around that are kitchens and bathrooms. Then the outermost rings are like the living rooms and the bedrooms. So the house could be understood as a series of rings surrounding a, a kind of heart and alternating from served, servant, and served again. So again, the public space kind of moves through the heart of the building and terminates at the living room. And that's flanked on two sides by the more private spaces, the kitchen on one side and the living quarters and the bedrooms and the study on the left side. The rooms are ordered by function. The boys' rooms are at the front. Uh, the staff rooms are also to the side of the entrance. Then you have the kitchen and the laundry to the right side, and the study and the bedroom to the, to the south. Spaces are separated, but not isolated, like the pavilions of the Trenton bathhouse, or separate buildings like the lab buildings. In this way, the building is designed from the inside out, with the outer silhouette becoming irregular, as the needs for each space are accommodated around the ring. Khan says that you start with this, but sometimes the interior wants to move out and break the walls out. Khan really talks about this being a discovery for himself. I think that's re this is reminiscent of Frank Lloyd Wright, who's also had a kind of inside-out mentality and diagonal connections between the different spaces. The overall building might also be said to be formed on a nine square grid, which puts it in the company of buildings like the Villa Rotunda by um, Palladio. There are other important bay sizes too that might be considered like an A, B, C, B, A structure that talks about the different um, bay modules across the top or across the side. Adhering to these geometric principles is what allows us to build an accurate model in the computer. Building the Goldenberg house in the computer is a little bit complicated. Due to all the angles of the roof and the angles in the plan, every sloped surface depends on the next one. So one change or discovery will manifest in a complete ripple effect throughout the building. That said, the plan geometry was relatively easy to establish using the built-in modular relationships of the plan and the center points. But natural discrepancies exist between different drawings of the house, and that's to be expected given that we've caught it partially through the design process. But of course that makes it kind of difficult to determine which details are in flux and which ones are more solid. And the details of this house seem to make a ton of difference. For instance, those triangular columns uh, at the corners here they don't really come out in full-scale plan depictions, it's hard to tell what they are, but, but Khan actually draws a very particular detail of these for us to understand how they work. And they work in such a way that at each level they click into the walls in different ways. So at this inner level there are no walls, uh, at this outer level they meet them at 90 degree angles, and then all the way out at the corners is how these columns uh, accommodate the 45 degree angles of the walls on the outside. Another challenge of building this house in the computer is the scale. This house is actually much, much smaller than we originally thought. It brings in everything pretty tight. And despite the dissolved outer boundary, the house is not very sprawling or particularly large. Exploring the Goldenberg House, I'm struck by just how different the building is depending on your perspective of it. From above or in plan, the building has a pretty recognizable configuration and shape. However, you might think it would be confusing to navigate once you're inside. From the outside, the building is unknowable and confusing, with lots of different elements competing for visual dominance. But as you enter the house, the approach is straightforward. Every door feels like a framed view with certain elements falling out of the frame, 
while colliding inside of our view in a composition or a painting. The off-axis entrance is understood relative to the symmetry of everything else. As we appear around the fireplace, which dominates as a landmark as you navigate around the building. The choreography of tight and compressed spaces with those that are expansive and open draws us into the most public spaces of the house pulls us right through from the entrance into the living room. The private spaces are closed off while the building pulls you through into the living room and presents it as if it were a series of layered spaces that you can't move through directly in a straight line, but instead you turn the corner and walk around the courtyard. The chimney also straddles and interrupts the inner circulation ring, the sunken seating area. When we look up, the chimney is framed almost perfectly in the skylight, which faces northwest. Overall, the diagonals in the building aren't quite as dominant as I thought they would be by, based on looking at the plan. However, in the living room, the seesaw roof is really featured. The skylights are more serving of the outer rooms, and in the master bedroom and study, they're very striking as you're presented with them right away. The spaces on the outside are very outward facing, as opposed to the living room, which is very inward facing. And the rest of the spaces seem bright and logically arrayed. My first thoughts of the Goldenberg House was that it looks like a strange Frankenstein of a building, or like some extinct fossil of an animal that hadn't fully evolved yet. And it does appear that way from the outside. And I know that Khan lists this dissolved nature of the exterior as an important discovery for him, but to me it kind of just looked messy. But going into the house, the building makes much more sense. The experience is cohesive and human scaled. This is unlike some of his other work, which could be monumental and makes visitors feel small and diminutive inside of it. I really enjoyed exploring the Goldenberg house, and if you did too, please consider giving the video a like. Also leave a comment on your thoughts about the Goldenberg house. I'd love to build an active conversation about the building here in the comments section. I'm also open to other suggestions of buildings that could be built and explored this way as well. If you'd like to see all the new videos when they come out, hit that subscribe button and the little bell button. The bell makes sure that you can see them. Also be sure to check out some more of my videos linked right here for your convenience. See you next time.